The United States currently provides a significant subsidy to solar energy development, largely through the investment tax credit. This tax credit is of course politically controversial, with some seeing it as a necessary step to fight global warming, and others seeing it as a distortion of the free market. Let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of continuing to subsidize solar energy. The largest pro is obviously that solar power helps reduce global warming. By deploying solar, we tend to move from dirty sources, fossil fuels, like coal, oil, natural gas, to this clean, renewable form of power, and thus reduce the amount of carbon dioxide we emit into the air. It is incredibly important that we continue to do this in order to prevent some of the devastation that global warming will bring if it goes unabated. Providing a direct subsidy to solar energy obviously helps it deploy at a faster rate than it would otherwise. Another benefit of solar energy subsidies is that it helps to counteract subsidies that fossil fuel companies get. Fossil fuel companies receive and have received for a long time various forms of subsidies ranging from tax credits to environmental cleanup that they don't pay for. Solar cannot reasonably be expected to compete against this without any sort of subsidy of its own. And even if you eliminated all subsidies of fossil fuels today, the long history of subsidizing fossil fuels would still give it an edge for a number of years over solar energy. Another big benefit of subsidies is that it helps to accelerate the growth of solar and get it further down its cost curve. Solar has come down in price enormously over the last few years and will likely continue to drop in price in the next few years as well. Subsidies have and will continue to help accelerate the growth of solar by moving it through the more expensive part of its research and development stage and allowing for demand to grow as well to bring in the cost savings of economies of scale. Subsidizing solar helps to create jobs in the green economy. Solar jobs, along with wind and other renewable energies, are some of the fastest growing jobs in the United States today. Subsidizing these industries has helped to create some of those jobs and will continue to boost job growth into the future. One of the biggest problems people see with this is that it distorts the free market. A lot of people believe that free markets tend to create better results than government-run or promoted industries. By providing a big direct subsidy, you are substantially changing the dynamic of the market. That said, of course, because of subsidies to other companies, including fossil fuel companies, it's harder to argue that there really has been a long-standing free market as it relates to the American energy industry. Another big con is that it costs taxpayers a huge amount of money. All of these subsidies are paid by the taxpayers, and solar has received billions of dollars in public money that could have been spent in other areas or sent back to the taxpayers in the form of a tax reduction, and any benefits it brings must be weighed against this cost. Perhaps the biggest problem with solar energy subsidies is that they are not the most efficient solution to global warming. A carbon tax would be much more efficient than direct subsidies, as it would penalize fossil fuel emissions, thus helping spur investment in renewable energies, but it would also still be relatively market-based and would allow for any alternative power source to be developed that was carbon-free, without having to have the government specifically pick and choose which alternative energies are worth subsidizing. A carbon tax would also provide more benefits to the poor, especially when combined with a dividend program as well. Too often solar subsidies only bring down the cost enough for middle and upper class Americans to buy solar, and thus the poor receive no direct benefit from it. But with a carbon tax and dividend system, the poor would tend to get more money back from the carbon tax than they spend in energy, as they tend to use less energy than the wealthy as they have smaller homes and tend not to drive cars. 
Unfortunately, moving from one form of addressing climate change to another is very politically difficult right now. And so even though a carbon tax might be better, it would be very hard to implement that. Let us know what you think about the pros and cons of subsidizing solar energy in the comments below, and like and subscribe to learn more.